Let's conclude this video by talking about whether or not my company can teach you how to sell. I have interviewed thousands of CFOs over the past decade or so. I doubt anyone in the country knows more about the insecurities and concerns of CFOs and their spouses than me. I can relate to these issues because I'm also one of you and I understand the issues related to a CFO feeling insecure about the ability to sell. Now, there's a stark difference between a God-given ability and a learned skill. And let's take you as an example. Think back many years ago when you graduated from college. Now, take a look at everything that you've accomplished over the past decades. Thinking back to the college days when you graduated, would you have ever imagined that you could have accomplished everything you have done in your career? The answer is a resounding no. Now I have another question. What did you lack when you graduated from college to accomplish all that you have learned over the years? Did you lack ability? Again, the answer is no. You had the ability when you graduated. You just had not been taught the skills to do what you've done. After graduation, you joined a series of companies, learned skills, applied those skills with your God-given abilities, and that you made significant accomplishments. This is analogous to your situation. You have the God-given ability to sell with integrity. You know this in your gut because you have been selling for the past few decades. For example, you sold every time you were hired for a W-2 job. You were, after all, selling yourself because you were competing against others who wanted that very same job. You also sold when you approached bankers, lenders, and investors for your employers. You sold to your employer when you wanted that well-deserved raise or bonus. You have been selling your thoughts, ideas, and concepts over the past few decades. In fact, you would never have accomplished as much as you have done without the God-given ability to sell. You're now feeling insecure about this concept of B2B CFO because you feel you do not have the ability to sell. I need you to get that thought out of your mind. You have the ability, but nobody has taken the time to teach you the skill. Again, there are two different concepts, ability versus skill. When I explain this concept to CFOs, they often say, okay, wise guy, tell me about my abilities that I have to sell. I don't see them. Do you have some kind of crystal ball that my spouse and I don't have? Well, no, I don't have a crystal ball, but I do have the ability, experience, skill, and wisdom to help you with this matter. So let me ask you some questions about your ability to sell. You can answer these questions to me with a simple, simple yes or no. Number one, do you have the ability to listen to business owners who is telling you about their problems and concerns? Do you have the ability to go into a company that is disorganized to help them create order and organization? Do you have the ability to talk face to face with bankers and lenders and explain the key concepts of a balance sheet, an income statement, and a statement of cash flow? Do you have the ability to listen to accounting staff and to train them how to do their jobs better? Do you have the ability to meet with bankers, attorneys, insurance agents, and financial planners? Can you show sincere interest in what they do for a living? Can you show sincere interest in what types of customers they're looking for to help them earn a living? Do you have the ability to learn new skills? Do you have the ability to talk to senior level people in your company to ask questions for advice? Do you have the ability to learn from others mistakes that they have made? And finally, do you have the ability to look another human being in the eye and show sincere interest in their well-being? A yes answer to these questions means you have the ability to learn skills that we need to teach you. Let me give you another analogy to help you with your feelings of self-doubt. Think back when you or a loved one was seriously ill or in a lot of pain. You most likely went to a medical doctor. Now, what happened during the conversation with the doctor? Most likely, you anxiously told the doctor about the illness or pain. The doctor took notes in a chart. The doctor occasionally asked questions, but was intent on listening to your concerns. In your anxiety, you may have rambled on too much or given too much information to the doctor. And that was not a concern to the doctor. This trained professional merely listened and took key information, took notes, and asked questions. Most likely, the doctor asked for a blood test, MRI, or x-ray, or some other test if he or she felt more information was needed to make a proper diagnosis. The doctor knows, for example, that giving a prescription without a proper diagnosis is malpractice, so much effort was made to obtain information before the prescription was given or to you or your loved one. Now I have a very important question. Did you ever feel during this process that the doctor was selling to you? Was the doctor applying pressure to you 
to buy what he or she was selling? Most likely, the answer is a resounding no. Now, let me make this very clear. The doctor was selling to you from the moment you entered the office until the final diagnosis was made. The doctor was selling one thing that's very important, your well-being. You did not feel pressure from the doctor, even though he or she makes money with you visiting them. You wanted the well-being that the doctor was selling. In fact, you were willing to spend time and money to get what the doctor was selling. Now, I have just explained to you our sales process. You and I are the doctors of business and accounting. Business owners are going to talk to us about their business problems, often with great anxiety. You will intently take notes while they talk. You will ask questions to get clarification. You'll always do the blood test or MRI, which is to talk to the accounting department to review the financial statements and to determine what is happening in the back end of the company. You will come back to the company and give a diagnosis and a prescription to relieve the business owner of pain. It is very easy for us to teach you the skills you need to learn this process. You have the God-given ability to learn our sales process. We, in turn, have the ability to teach you. You have made about 90% of the progress you need to make. We can add the other 10% you are missing and help you achieve above your self-impression of your ability and skills. Actually, I believe in you more than you believe in yourself, and I can teach you how to gain that confidence. If you want to earn between $200,000 to $400,000 a year using our firm, you must do something very important. Make the decision. I sought the advice from someone I respect before I started this business back in 1987. His first name is Roger. I'll never forget what he said. When I told him that I just couldn't make up my mind what to do, he said, quote, the hardest decision is to make up your mind to go for it. Once you make the decision, everything else will fall into line as to what you are supposed to do, end quote. Roger was right. I am grateful for his advice and wisdom. A B2B CFO far partner follows a scientific approach to selling that has been proven to be successful since 1987. I have explained how our firm can address eight of your needs on this video. Let's review them quickly. Job security, control over your future, enough money to enjoy a good standard of living, a good retirement fund, job satisfaction, respect from your family, friends, and peers about your career, association with peer professionals. We have the advice to teach you how to find clients and how to sell. Now, before I close, let me say a few things about the investment our partners make to join our firm. I realize that most CFOs, especially those that have been W-2 employees during most of their careers, are risk averse. So let's put things into perspective. The risk of joining our company is very low, which is why we refer to the fee as the low risk solution. The dollars you might invest will be repaid to you in the first 80 to 100 billable hours of your time as a B2B CFO partner. It's not like you're investing a quarter million dollars into a business that will have a lot of expenses such as rent and other costs. If you become a B2B CFO partner and put some effort into it, the odds are you'll get 100% of your investment back into your bank account. Hopefully, you will become like most of the successful B2B CFO partners who don't want to leave B2B CFO because they couldn't afford a pay cut to become a W-2 employee again. Second, this investment is not so much an investment in B2B CFO as it is in you. You will learn new things that will benefit you personally and professionally. You will learn that you have within you the capabilities that perhaps were hidden or unknown. Your self-confidence will grow. Have faith in yourself because you are more capable of than perhaps you know. It is the rainmakers of life that make the most money. And you may as well invest your, in yourself to learn these rainmaking skills. Now let me give you a quick analogy. Years ago, you invested money to obtain a college degree and perhaps an advanced degree. Did you consider the money you spent as an investment in the college or university that taught you, or did you view the money you spent as an investment in yourself? Of course, you invested the money as an investment in yourself to help you achieve your future goals. And so it is with B2B CFO. This money is invested in you to help you achieve your future goals. Now, have some faith in B2B CFO. We have been in business since 1987, so we've learned a few things. We're the largest CFO firm in the nation. Now, I believe that there's something that has caused our paths to cross. So have faith in that process and pursue that which is in your best interest. In closing, let me 
leave with you the thoughts from a couple of very successful people. The first was from Henry Ford who said, quote, if you think you can do a thing or think you can't do a thing, you are right. The second thought is from James Allen who penned these famous words around 1902 in his book, As a Man Thinketh, quote, the thoughtless, the ignorant, and the indolent, seeing only the apparent effects of things and not the things themselves talk of luck, of fortune and chance. Seeing a man grow rich, they say, how lucky he is. Observing another man become intellectual, they exclaim, how highly favored he is. And noting the saintly character and wide influence of another, they remark, how chance aids him at every turn. They do not see the trials and failures and struggles which these people have voluntarily encountered in order to gain their experience. They have no knowledge of the sacrifices they have made, of the undaunted efforts they have put forth, and of the faith they have exercised that they might overcome the apparently insurmountable and realize the vision of their heart. They do not know the darkness and heartaches. They only see the light and joy and call it luck. They do not see the long and arduous journey, but only behold the pleasant goal and call it good fortune. They do not understand the process, but only perceive the result and call it chance. In all human affairs, there are efforts and there are results, and the strength of the effort is the measure of the result. Chance is not. Gifts, powers, material, intellectual, and spiritual possessions are the fruits of effort. They are thoughts completed, objects accomplished, visions realized. The vision that you glorify in your mind, the ideal that you enthrone in your heart, this you will build your life by, this you will become." End quote. Thank you for your time and good luck with your decision. Let us know if we can help you with any more information about B2B CFO.